Hello everyone. We're going to have the dirty dirt from this Vail and Smugglers tour. Now behind me is Stephen White's house. Now Stephen White was a uh, local politician. He was a state senator and also was on the governor's council. He was one of his main um, counselors. Now after the mysterious death of Stephen White's uncle, Joseph White, he inherited lots of shares in the Second Bank of the United States. And when Jackson didn't renew the charter, he was going to lose a lot of money. And his influence was so great in Washington at the time, Andrew Jackson actually had to come to this house behind me and explain to him why he didn't renew the charter. Now because of this, Stephen White was able to work with two other very prominent people in Washington, D.C. First one's Daniel Webster. He would be the Secretary of State for William Harrison. And also, before and afterwards, one of the most powerful um, senators leading up to the Civil War. The other person he had was uh, Associate Court Justice Joseph Story. Now, Joseph Story was the most influential Supreme Court uh, member at the time. We still follow lots of his um, rulings on the interpretation of the Constitution. One of the main things he kept defending was that Second Bank of the United States. So after Jackson got rid of the bank, all of them were standing to lose lots of money. For an, uh, you know, sometimes you get tongue tied. So Joseph Story and Daniel Webster were directors of the Boston branch of the Second Bank of the United States. Story was also director of the bench in Washington. So, here we go. Nice to see you, Kenneth. We're doing a little bit of um, some dirt in Salem and all the people with the tunnels. So, recap. We have Stephen White, lived in the house behind me, and he used Daniel Webster and Joseph Story. One of them was a major senator leading up to the Civil War. And also, Joseph Story, he was the Superior Court Justice, which we still use most of his interpretations of what the Constitution means. Now, hello, Gina. So, with Stephen White and Daniel Webster and Joseph Story, they planned the um, inauguration of William Harrison. Daniel Webster actually wrote his speech, but the puppet William Harrison actually started thinking for himself. And he wasn't going to make that second bank in the United States, which Webster and Story and White were going to lose a lot of money with. Now, I was mentioned before, behind me in that house is where Andrew Jackson came to talk to Stephen White after he didn't renew the charter on his second bank in the United States. And this is a reason why they most likely were able to plan and then succeed and assassinated William Harrison. Now, he didn't die from pneumonia from his longest inaugural speech ever. And also, you know, that speech was done during a snowstorm. But whoever catches pneumonia a month later? That's what some people say. But in reality, uh, Harrison died of typhoid. And later on, he won't be the only one who dies of typhoid from the Whig Party who got elected president. Another one will be um, Zachary Taylor. He would also catch typhoid while he was in office and survive only die from it three months afterwards. Actually, sorry, that wasn't Taylor. That was Polk. Polk was the one who caught it during office and then died three months afterwards. Zachary Taylor lived 16 months in office as president, and then he dies of typhoid. Polk made independent treasury, taking all of our treasury money out of state and national banks and putting it into an independent treasury where Congress actually owns. Go figure that out. Noisy trucks and all going by. Four buses. Now, Taylor, he didn't want to make the second bank of the United States either. So he'll die 16 months in office of typhoid. Typhoid poisoning. Alexander the Great was assassinated by it. A woman in the 20s killed seven husbands through typhoid. Um, also, there was a doctor who then killed off his whole, his whole in-laws and all his wife's family. Now, how do you make typhoid? Well, you add some water some urine and feces together, put in a bottle, and wait like a week or two, and guess what? You got typhoid. Just added to someone's food, and probably within about four days you killed him. So they might have got away with killing Polk, William Harrison, 
and Zachary Taylor. Also, there's the thing about Harrison. He, uh, he will be the first one to suffer Tecumseh's curse. He actually defeated him in uh, the battle during the War of 1812, and it's only Tecumseh cursed these presidents. And um, thank you for enjoying it. Uh, so it's wherever the curse is supposed to be, if any president elected during a odd number year would die in office. The last one actually suffered from the curse but survived was Ronald Reagan, who was elected in 1980. So that was Daily Dirt and how this man behind me who lived in this house, Stephen White, got away with the murder of William Harrison. But the funny thing, actually, before I end, you didn't get to live long to actually appreciate it because if Harrison died in April, he died in August. So maybe they picked the best business partners. Maybe the fact that Daniel Webster's son was married to his daughter and his brother-in-law was married to his other daughter maybe didn't hold up too much steam in the long run. Hey, if you were becoming the most powerful senator at the time and you moved out to Secretary of State, maybe you don't need to keep your banker around that long. But at least it gave him some ideas because, you know, um, Daniel Webster and Story would probably go off to also... Uh, playing the murder of Polk, and then by the time we get to Zachary Taylor, uh, Daniel Webster and um, the other cohort, I forgot to mention, was Henry Clay, who was also one of the most powerful senators at the time, who was a founder of the Whig Party, and all these candidates were elected from. Yeah, I think he just died right before Zachary Taylor, too. So Daniel Webster is the one who actually lived long enough to see the deaths of all three of those presidents. And during his lifetime... They weren't able to make that third bank of the United States that they were trying to do after Jackson got rid of the second bank. It took all the way up to Woodrow Wilson in 1913 to actually create the Federal Reserve, which is uh, the third bank of the United States. So there's a whole bunch of different um, stories coming from Salem and how they affect the uh, history of our country. Now here we got Stephen White. He, um, you know... Mur planned the murder of Harrison, which led on to the um, murders of Polk and Zachary Taylor after he dies. Uh, we'll, we also get George Peabody involved with this, too. George Peabody is the one who's selling all the shares of our treasury uh, through the Second Bank of the United States to England. So it makes you wonder... Um, so you've got to make yourself wonder... Actually, go back, we got the first bank in the United States. And the reason why that was removed and the second bank in the United States was because 70%, over 70% of our national treasury was going to be in the hands of the English. You know, so we made the first bank in the United States during Adams' time period. Second president, by the second president, we were handing back all our money to the uh, people who defeated. So it makes you wonder who won the Revolutionary War. So, yep. That's kind of the history of how the Federal Reserve and some unaccounted assassinations before Lincoln had happened in Salem. And to find out more of these stories, there's a book coming out I should finish by the end of this month called Sub Rosa. Also, you can always take the tour, Salem Smuggler's Tour, and find out about the drug lord who got the, the Forbes into business. Uh, this is a Washington Square north on the Commons. And also, if you come on the tour, you'll do a little bit more about this murder mystery. we got a special murder mystery coming up starting the 17th, which would be Monday, oh, Friday and Saturday to the end of the month. And it uh, goes over the murder of Joseph White. Uh, he was a slave trader, and um, he was the first privateer in town. And it was his death that gave Stephen White the money into the Second Bank of the United States. So it's an interesting murder mystery who done it. And you get to choose, you know, which person out of six suspects they actually killed the man. So that's uh, Mondays, Fridays, and Saturdays for the rest of the month. And you get to figure out who uh, really killed the uh, Joseph White, the old man that lived down there across from Pro Pro Haven. Very interesting stuff. So actually, this time I might sign off. And... Uh, Check out SalemTunnelTour.com for more information. We have the Salem Smugglers Tour, more than witches. So, have a good night.